Thanks, Eric. And uh, I should thank the fellow panelists here for indulging Eric and I for sort of squeezing me in here at the last minute. So I'll try to keep this short so that I don't take up too much of your time. Um, and uh, I should warn everybody in the audience, this is the first time I've presented in public since COVID. So I hope I can still do this without my sweatpants on. So I'm going to go through the slides here quickly. Quick snapshot, first of all, I'll just give a little introduction to the company and then we'll get into the deal that Eric discussed. Um, you can see here we've got about 129 million shares out, 150 fully diluted. Our market cap, thanks to the tail end of that chart, is now down around uh, 9 million Canadian. Uh, at March of this year, we had about $2.1 million in the Treasury. That's obviously changed in the last couple of days. Barrick is one of our largest shareholders at just under 10%. Strategic Metals owns uh, about 16% and uh, Insiders are about 6% of the company. The people, uh, again, this is critical. We've got a, a sort of a geological background here, heavily weighted on the geology side of things with uh, Adrian Fleming as the chairman. Alistair Waddell, who is with Inflection Resources, some of you may know. Uh, he's also director of Headwater, who I think is presenting at a number of MIFs recently. Um, Lon Shaver is with Silver Corp, former investment banker at Raymond James, and Michael Moore, the vice president of exploration, is sort of my right-hand man on the management side of things. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about our Newfoundland assets at the back end of this, uh, but just to give you a quick indication, we picked up some ground in Newfoundland in mid to late last year, two projects specifically, highly prospective, uh, within sort of emerging regions of the province, a little bit off the beaten path from where some of the high flyers are. Uh, good access and infrastructure, and we think they've been sort of under-recognized and underappreciated. And uh, that sort of is our, uh, our, our sort of uh, sweet spot in project acquisition as, as uh, the latest transaction on Friday, I think, evidences. So as uh, Eric mentioned, we've been in the Dominican Republic for the better part of about nine or ten years. Uh, we've got three projects in the country, uh, all three of which are owned 100%, no underlying option payments, no work commitments. Um, the first acquisition was our Wanda Herrera project, which is on sort of the western part of the country. This is adjacent to GoldQuest Romero deposit, which is somewhere in the ballpark of about 3 million ounces gold equivalent at a pre-feasibility stage and marching towards uh, development uh, after what they hope will be a long-awaited receipt of an exploitation permit sometime soon. Um, in 2019, we picked up the other two assets being Ponton, which is drill ready, drill permitted, and our Pueblo Grande project, which is adjacent to Barracks. Pueblo Viejo mine in the central part of the country. For those that don't know what Pueblo Viejo looks like in terms of one of the largest mining operations in the world, this, this photograph sort of gives you an indication. Um, this is, as I said, one of the largest mining operations in the world. Uh, there's about uh, 13 million ounces of gold and about 80 million ounces of silver and 300 million pounds of copper. Um, produces about half a million ounces a year at just over $600 an ounce all in sustaining cost and there's been over $4 billion in infrastructure investment into this project. It's currently the single largest contributor to the Dominican Republic's economy. It gives you an indication of how important this mine is to the country and to Barrick. And I think the final point here that I've uh, inserted into this is that in recent months, Barrick has been very vocal about their desire to invest an additional $1.3 billion into Pueblo Viejo for expansion and growth of the mining operation. So our Pueblo Grande project is here in yellow. This, uh, as you can see, essentially surrounds Barrick's Pueblo Viejo mine on three sides. It's a significantly larger land package than Barrick's Pueblo Viejo property package. There are multiple uh, highly prospective prospects within the project area and it is of course strategically located and that was part of the um, thinking when we acquired the project back in 2019. Not only was it prospective but we believed that there was perhaps a strategic angle here on the potential that a major mining operation with a small footprint might need more ground. Um, again when we picked up the project uh, we paid a total of about $300,000 $25,000 in cash and the balance in shares. Uh, gold was heavily out of favor at that time. Uh, we were up against uh, crypto and, and cannabis, as I'm sure we can all remember. It was pretty tough times, uh, late 2018, early 2019. Uh, the Dominican Republic was largely out of favor. And um, as you can see from that chart there, I didn't have the crystal ball on where gold was going. 
but uh, the arrow there indicates the timing of when we picked up this project and it, it, it proved to be quite fortuitous. We spent about $350,000 on, on Pueblo Grande before uh, our friends at Barrick came along and asked us to enter into a earning agreement whereby Barrick now has the right to earn a 70% interest in the project by spending $10 million US over six years. We're about two and a bit years into that earning agreement. They've spent a little over $2 million to date. What I like about this uh, earning agreement that's important for us is two key points. One, of course, they're going to spend $10 million in exploration, but they've also got to pr produce a pre-feasibility study at the end of that six-year term. And the reason that's important to me is that, you know, myself and everybody in this room could go down to the Dominican Republic and spend $10 million U.S. over six years and have the time of our lives. It doesn't necessarily advance the project systematically. So the requirement for Barrick to deliver that pre-fees keeps them honest. Uh, the other part of it is there's uh, a right for Precipitate to call upon Precipitate to arrange our portion of project financing uh, should they continue on towards construction. And again, that helps us to get unceremoniously diluted down to an NSR because we can't come up with several hundred million dollars. So we think we're well protected there. So this is the news headline that came out on Friday and the catalyst for Eric um, being gracious enough to invite me to be here today. So on Friday after market, we announced that we had uh, reached a deal with Barrick to amend that uh, underlying earning agreement for $5 million cash and a 3% NSR for relinquishing certain non-core portions of the project while continuing on with the earning agreement with Barrick. Um, some of the key highlights here is that the ground, for, for sensitivities related to the Dominican Republic, related to Barrick, related to some CSR issues, I, I'm not disclosing the specific locations of, of the ground, but what I can tell you is that, I don't know if this pointer works, but, yeah. oh, no, it went the wrong way. Um, this one? Oh, so the ground we've relinquished is here and down in the southern, uh, southeastern portion of the project down in this area here. These are areas that, I don't know how to go forward again. Oh, here we go. These are areas that have seen uh, from prior operators, not ourselves, uh, 119 prior drill holes that have returned very little in the way of meaningful mineralization. So we're comfortable that these areas are not prospective for uh, gold or copper or any extractable mineralization. Um, and we don't think that the geological terrain where these projects are located is conducive to hosting mineralization. I said. Yeah, so here are the terms of the deal. Um, you can see here it's a $5 million U.S. cash payment. Uh, as Eric just pointed out in his presentation, the value of that in Canadian dollars is going up every day. Um, before we were completing the news release, the Canadian equivalent changed about $200,000 over the course of about a week. So um, nice to have negotiated that in U.S. dollars. We've got a 3% NSR on the ground that we are relinquishing to Barrick. So we're protected in that regard. Um, furthermore, if Barrick uh, completes their condemnation drilling on these projects, they're going to do 3,200 meters of condemnation drilling. If that drilling intersects any mineralization that Barrick deems extractable, that ground then comes back into our earn-in agreement, uh, back into 100% uh, ownership of precipitate at no cost to precipitate. So we, not only do we keep our $5 million, but we would then get the project back into uh, our earn-in. And... Um, and again, I think the other critical component is here, we're not relinquishing the project. We're not giving up the project. So this is simply relinquishment on a small portion of the property, but the $10 million earn in uh, still continues, uh, just on a slightly reduced size project. And Barrick is continuing to test multiple targets within the project area. I'm short on time here, so uh, really what I'll final, uh, my final note here will be that we've got uh, a treasury now of uh, close to eight or a little over $8 million Canadian. Um, we are um, well versed with three projects in the Dominican Republic that will see exploration uh, in, in the months ahead from Barrick. Uh, potential for us to reestablish exploration ourselves on those projects. And we've got two projects in Newfoundland that are on the cusp of commencement of work where we'll have boots on the ground and become active with several um, phases of exploration all geared towards drilling both of those projects later this year. 
Um, I think I've got more slides, but I think I'll leave it at that and uh, hand it back over to Eric and the rest of the panel. I unfortunately will not be around for uh, the immediate time following this presentation, but I'll be back this afternoon. I've got my table set up, so if anybody wants to speak to me and, and, and talk a little bit more about the deal and where we're going next with this cash position, I'm more than happy to talk to anybody that wants to speak to me. Thank you.